What's up YouTube? This is Ed from South Jersey Vapors. Today we're going to be reviewing for you the Turboship V1 clone from Tobacco. Pick this up at 101vape.com. It was $31.99 plus $2 for shipping. Maybe $2.50. Who knows? I can't remember. But um, I've had it for a little bit so I figured it was time to go ahead and post the review. This is a great piece. Um, it came out of the box looking beautiful. Um, that's enough talk about it. Let's go in for the close-up and show you what it looks like on the inside and outside. Okay, and here we have the Turboship V1 in the box from to Be Together Best Cooperation. I love the way that they spell that, Together Best Cooperation. All right, so Tobacco, Turboship V1, open the box. Here we have the mod, fully assembled. The engravings facing up, looks really nice. Go ahead and dump that out, get rid of the box real quick. And here we have all of its pieces. It's going to be your standard modular mod with the separate tubes that screw together. You've got an 18500 sleeve, you've got the 18650 sleeve, and you've got the main sleeve which houses the 18350 battery. You've got a top cap with airflow slots cut into it, and you've got your bottom cap with your engravings and your lock switch on it. So we'll go ahead and take this thing apart. Start real quick with the top cap, set that to the side. In the top cap we have a floating center pin. It floats really nice, it's sitting in a piece of press fit Delrin ring and it moves really nice. It's got a chrome polish finish on it. It looks pretty darn decent. Set that to the side. The next thing we have here is our 18500 sleeve. Well, that thing almost got away from me. 18500 sleeve that you would add to the main tube if you want to use it in 18500 mode. This is the 18650 mode with no top cap, so we'll take that sleeve off, break it down. I don't know if you can hear it, but the threading is really smooth. It's a great piece. We picked this up at 101 Vape. I've had it for a little bit, so I'm pretty familiar with how it works and all of its performance and everything. Now we've got the main tube with the button on it, and we've got the engraving on the front side, and we've got the engraving with the small turtle ship on the back side and this one happens to be serial number 0150 not the serial numbers mean much in the world of clones for all I know they are all serial numbered the same exact thing we'll take off our bottom ring here all right set the 18652 to the side so here we have our bottom button with the turtle ship engraving on the bottom of it and we've got our lock ring which is a pretty thick piece of steel moves really easily. It's a nice lock ring. It's about, I mean, it really moves pretty easy. Here we have the firing mechanism. The button moves really well. Um, it's a spring button, but it's got some, a bit of resistance on it, but it, it's very smooth operation. You can push it on the edges and you have no trouble with that. It doesn't push the firing pin at an angle. This piece of Delrin goes around the firing button. And as you can see, it adjusts in and out so that you can not adjust your throw of your switch, but you can actually adjust for battery rattle inside of the mod when it is fully assembled. So we'll go ahead and set this off to the side. The threading is extremely smooth if you can see inside of there, I'm not sure, but when you hear me assemble it and disassemble it, you can definitely tell that it is made very well. Another thing that I really like about this mod is that the pieces go together in whatever order you like. I like to put the 650 tube underneath the main tube so that my engraving sits higher. But if you wanted to, you could do it the other way and put the tube above the engraving. And it goes together nice. The seams are really well done. And this is a Tobacco piece, and they're not necessarily known for the best machining or the best quality. Um, some of the other clone manufacturers like H Cigar really have the reputation when it comes to that, but this piece is actually really well made. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and assemble this thing. Go ahead and put the bottom ring on. Actually, you know, we'll save the bottom for last. Put our top cap in. We'll do a quick voltage drop test. Um, we're gonna use a Prometheus that's measuring 0.44 and a Sony 30 amp battery that's fully charged. All right, so 
Let's go ahead and put our atomizer on here to set the floating pin. In order to do that, all you need to do is screw it down flush. It pushes the pin to where it needs to be in order to make contact and stay in full contact with your battery when you insert it. Next thing, battery. Obviously, the nipple goes up. And we're going to back out our Delrin a good amount to start. And this is what took me a little bit of time to get without having to disassemble and reassemble the mod to get rid of the battery rattle. I like to adjust the Delrin so it's out quite a bit. I go ahead and screw this in most of the way. Then I let the battery slide down the tube and make contact with the Delrin. And as I go ahead and screw this in, it automatically screws the Delrin down tight so that the seal's made perfectly. Now we've got everything all set to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off because I know that the depths are set properly. All right, so go ahead and put our voltage reader on here. Four point two eight, four point two eight, four point two eight. I will tell you that I just got done cleaning the contacts on this piece because I have been using it for about a month and a half now. So let's see what we got here. Three point five eight, three point seven one. 3.75, 3.66. So it's averaging, I would say, around 3.7. So if we're coming from 4.28 to 3.7, that's going to be roughly a 0 0.45, 0 0.5 voltage drop. It's 3.75, 77, 76. So now we're getting some consistency here. 7.6, that's getting hot. So it, the voltage drop isn't awful, but it's not the greatest in the world. But it's not something that you'll notice necessarily if you have a good build and a good atomizer. Another thing I can tell you about this is, I was in the store over in Philadelphia, we have a brick and mortar store there that sells mods and I was in there just checking out the store and they had one of these in the case. And as I'm looking at it in the case, I asked them to pull it out, I was telling them, you know, oh, I'll have one of those. and and this and that, and I'm messing with it, and um, came. To, turns out that he had the authentic one, and um, mine is a clone, and you really could tell that there was virtually no difference at all. Um, as I took it apart, the thread styles were the same, so this is a true one-to-one -one clone. Everything on this one fit onto the one they had there, and you could not tell them apart when they were sitting in the case. The only difference that was great is that the engraving on this one is not quite as deep, but the engraving is definitely deeper on this than say on my H Cigar Nemesis clone. You can definitely feel that it's engraved in there and the ink that's inside the engraving is holding up rather well. So we'll go back out to the long shot and we'll take a couple of vapes and I'll give you my final thoughts on this piece. All right, so let's have a quick vape. Mmm, that is good. I've, the juice I have in here right now is by five pawns. It's called Grandmaster. It's it's excellent. Really peanut buttery. Really, really good. So um, my final thoughts on this piece. We've got it topped with the um, tobacco version of the Prometheus. And it is just chucking the vapor. So as far as the voltage drop is concerned, like we showed in the close-up, um, it's not really affecting it that bad. Um, it is a little bit more voltage drop than I have with some of my Nemesis clones and some other clones that I have, but still really does chuck the vapor. Things I like about this, um, I like the lock switch. It just flows back and forth really easy at the flick of a finger. Um, the threading on the tubes is great. I like that you can put them in any order and it doesn't bind up or get crooked or anything like that. It, it really works well. Um, I like the finish on it. I like that I walked into a brick and mortar shop and saw the authentic version of this and could not tell the difference at all until I put my thumb across the engraving. The engraving on this is done really well though. It's definitely better than most of my other clones as far as the depth of the engraving and the quality of the ink put in the engraving. It's really well done. Um, so everything's a plus. We picked this up for $31.99 from 101vape.com 
they had it in stock. I ordered it the first day it came on there live and I've had it for maybe a month and a half, two months now. And it's just, it's great. I use it all the time, um, especially with this particular atomizer because I just like the way that it, the way that it looks and the way that it feels. It's very solid. The thickness of the tubes is really nice. Um, and all the 22 millimeter atomizers that I have look great on it. The one thing I forgot to mention in the close-up is that the 510 threading is just as smooth as all the threading throughout the rest of the device. So it's a really good piece. Um, $31.99, 101vape.com. The shipping is usually just a couple of bucks and they ship fast and they're very good customer service. I highly recommend them to anybody who hasn't tried 101vape.com yet. And uh, they're in no way any kind of sponsor of our videos. It just happens to be one of the places that I go for most of my vape gear. Um, so yeah, the things I like about it, the threading's great. I like the button, it never misfires. Um, I like the engravings on it. I like the way that it looks, the finish, all the stuff about it. The only thing that I had it that was a problem with it is the 510 threading on it pulls the, the atomizer down really nice and flush, but with a couple of addies that I have, they got bound up on top and there was a kind of like a vacuum seal going on or something like that. And it was, I had to take the top cap off and remove the top cap from the atomizer itself. I had to do that a couple of times. It probably was user error, me maybe over tightening or something like that. But I haven't had that issue since um, the last time that I pulled it off. It only happened like two times and it hasn't happened since. So more than likely user error. Um, I, like I said, I would recommend it. It's a great piece. If you're looking in this price range and you want something that's a little bit different from a Nemesis and that's nice and solid in your hand, um, this would be the way to go. It houses 18650, 18350, 18490, or 18500. Um, is it kickable? Yeah, probably with the uh, the extra tube on top of there, you'd probably be able to kick it. I don't use kicks. I'm, I use straight mech and sub ohm builds. And the build that's in here right now is a dual coil. It's reading at about 0.44 or so. And um, it's on stainless steel mesh in this Genesis style atomizer. Um, it's good stuff. Make sure you check our uh, Facebook page out, South Jersey Vapors. Make sure you like the page, um, like the video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. And uh, we'll put a link of this in the description box. If you're looking to purchase this piece, we'll put the link in there. So make sure you check all that stuff out. Thanks for checking out our video today. And uh, have a great day. Vape on.